We are at the beginning of day two out here. We had a little bit of water filling up this area down here at the deep spot. So all we're doing is draining that out and then we're gonna overdig this area here so that we can have plenty of room to build our brick wall based on the depth of the pond that we want it to be. We're also, you can see this trench has already been started to have gotten dug. That is going to be where the perforated drain tile is going to sit in, which will be our under drain system. And after discussing with that, he thought it was best that we move and we daylight this drain system somewhere over to this area over here which makes a lot of sense rather than trying to go out that way around the intake bay and that kind of stuff so we're gonna have a trench here as well as something underneath that area where that wall is gonna be we'll fill that orange drain tile and then with gravel and then we will run a perforated pipe that comes up and daylights out somewhere over into this area here to a pit which we can then discharge when the water ever fills up that pit So this is the challenge that we're working with right now. Because of the soil conditions and the groundwater that's present, we're doing the best we can to kind of excavate this area, over excavate this area, but our shelves and stuff just keep collapsing. So we're gonna end up having to overdig this significantly in order to make our lives easier when we get the liner and everything in and we start rocking, and especially building this brick wall that's gonna get us down to our four and a half foot elevation. So right now, Ed is double checking the depth that we need to be at because we need to make room for base material and that kind of stuff underneath this brick wall so that we get it nice and level. We want water depth in this section to be four and a half feet deep. Ed, right now, uh, give me two seconds. Yep. I see you out here double checking depths with the pond and I explained why we are going at least six inches deeper than what we intended the deepest part of our water level to be and that's to compensate for base material yep. in order for us to build that wall to the height that we need it to be. Yeah, so we're gonna have this flat plane. So right now we have a slope coming down. This is gonna be the floor of the pond. What we need to do is have a recessed area in that floor we're gonna to have to have a recessed little channel down in the bottom and that's gonna accept that four inch drain pipe so that's gonna be a perforated drain tile we'll put down some fabric we'll put that pipe in there and then we'll completely cover it in a clear stone so there's no fines in that material then we'll cover the top of that so we'll have that U channel then we'll cover that up in the middle of that will be that drain pipe then we'll cover that up with fabric we'll put our rubber liner in place so that way all that groundwater is gonna seep through all this porous sand it's gonna take the path of least resistance it's gonna go inside of that pipe because it's hollow that pipe then we're gonna take, we're gonna do a channel all the way to the outside edge. We're gonna do a sump pit. So what we'll be able to do, we'll get everything roughed in, we'll get that trench done over to the side, we keep the pump running. And by having that pump running, it's gonna dewater the entire spot. So if we can do that hole over on the other side, six or eight inches below the bottom of the pond, all that water is gonna go over there first. It'll allow us to draw the water down in this area. Just keep that pump operating. That'll allow us time to build our walls, get all that structure in place and start backfilling everything. So the big challenge I see see right now is we're starting to see slumping. Slumping is that. So it's yep. going to start kind of falling down on the bottom because that's a saturated soil. When you have unconsolidated soils like that, it moves. It becomes very, very liquid. As soon as we take away all the soil around it, all that stuff, that moisture just starts pulling out. And as that's pouring out of there, it's pulling out small sand particles. All the weight on top of it, putting pressure on top of it, it slowly just crumbles inside. So that's very, very unstable. So once we start going, we're going to have to move quick. Once we get our drain pipe in there once we get the liner in place we just got to really just churn through it get that wall built to keep everything intact once we get above that ledge we're going to be golden you know everything else will start falling in place but right now it's going to be a little bit mission critical stuff here probably for the next three or four hours well then i'm going to put the camera down because i can't <laughs> stop let's do it and that's what i was talking about <laughs> well you were right as always god all right, fabric is going in. Then we'll get our four inch drain tile on top of that. Four inch drain pot tile. We're gonna put in some of that clear stone. And what we're gonna end up doing is literally push the pipe down to the appropriate elevation. As we push, water's gonna start seeping in. It's gonna displace some of that muck in the mud and everything, but we're a little bit deeper than we need to. The big challenge that I'm seeing right now is the more we dig, it's just gonna keep collapsing on us. So again, we just gotta, we, we're deeper than we need to. We'll start manipulating everything. I think we'll be able to make it work. It's gonna be a little bit touch and go here for a bit, but I think we're fine. It's that slumping you were talking about. That darn slumping. What kind of technique do you call this? Uh, this uh, is called the waterbed. The waterbed, okay. It's actually part of my dance moves that I learned in dance class, but no, we're just we're literally standing on the pipe, getting it to fill with water, to hopefully weight it down, and then we're gonna fill it with this 
57, this clean stone over the top, then we're gonna run fabric over the top of that. Then our liner, then fabric, and then rock and roll. Right, Mikey? Yes, sir. Rock and roll. All right, so this is what progress actually looks like as far as getting the infrastructure underneath the pond complete. You can see Ed pushing down that gook, you know, but that's just that. Liquefying it, yeah the soil down there. So what we're doing right now is creating a much more solid base that'll be underneath the liner. And we've got our drain tile ran starting over in that corner to the right of Ed. Runs this way into a T, which also has a four inch line that runs in a trough going this way down underneath. So what we do is we put fabric down, then the drain pipe, then you can see that three quarter clean stone that's over the top of everything. Then we're gonna put more fabric over the top of this, then our liner, then our fabric. Oh my gosh. Liner is in, fabric is in, the sun is shining. I don't know what we're gonna do with ourselves. Us Illinois boys, we might OD on vitamin D. <laughs> All right, so we're in great shape, man. I mean, I feel really good about the progress that we've made so far. Kind of one of the first things that we're gonna try and tackle is maybe get some big boulders in, but also work on that, that retaining wall that's right. down at that four and a half foot depth, right? Yeah, exactly, because we're gonna keep taking water on. So this is gonna start sitting uh, really spongy down here on the bottom. We put in all that stone in there. It's got a little bit of that waterbed feel to it so I could actually feel a little bit of water coming up inside of there so we need a relief so that's why Jason and Mike jumped on it right away we're gonna try to do that connecting area to get any excess water over there we'll keep deep watering everything because water is just gonna want it seeping inside of here yeah I feel real good with the progress again this just comes back from experience we've been in this situation before we know how to tackle it it can be frustrating at times but you just got to be systematic stick with the game plan over dig everything make sure you hold your elevations right and you have to compensate for that stuff digging out a little bit extra I know things want to keep falling in on top of us but if we don't do that then we're going to miss our mark we won't be at four and a half feet so i know that was one of those requirements that john and his wife are looking at they wanted to have a specific volume of water in here so we wanted to make sure that we hit it for them i want to start getting that wall stone down here on the bottom because the most critical area still is going to be this deep section we have some really tall walls here we still have that water infiltrating we still have that unconsolidated soil condition so it's going to want to keep migrating on us so if we can get some structural stuff in here if it starts falling in it's not going to get underneath anything so we'll have a wall in place so if things start slumping in it's going to push up against something we'll come in after once we get that wall established our excavation is over here we'll fill that void space in on top of the liner behind the wall with more crushed stone that's going to give us a really really solid strong foundation for everything then we can continue with some of those bigger boulders on the top edge working our way out So Trevor has wrapped up backfilling along the back side of the aqua block. So he's just pulling the liner and fabric back. This is the intake bay. All the components is exactly what it looks like prior to any rock going in. This is the heart of the system, okay? This is where that 500 gallons of storage really comes into play. You can see our two pump vaults for the respective pumps, but I wanted to get kind of a bird's eye view or an overview of what this area looks like prior to rocks going in and us disguising it. So often in our videos, we show the finished product. I wanted you to see the exact layout of this you can see we've got our 16 large aqua blocks which equals about our 500 gallons of storage we've got our two pump vaults again we made a significant amount of holes or additional holes in it to allow for more water to infiltrate you can see we've got aqua blocks on the back side as well because we cut all those slits out on the back side to allow water to come in through the back the sides as well as the front the guys did a fantastic job getting this together it's all backfilled solid ready to roll we've got our little shelf in here that has managed not to collapse yet the next thing we're going to do is kind of throw in two or three signature boulders down there and what that's going to do is a it's going to help prevent some of this area from continuing to slump or slide in or cave in but it's also going to give us some termination points for this l-shaped architectural wall that we're going to build inside the pond to get to that four and a half foot depth which is all down there so done now we're going to refocus our energies in here eddie ready to go pick out some rocks i am ready but i got to talk to john real quick over here on camera so who's 
John, let me see him. He's holding up progress. Oh, there's John. Thanks a lot, John. Okay, John. First rock, baby. Need about 18 inches. Sean and I are just about wrapped up with this brick wall in here, and Ed is placing this enormous boulder right there. To determine, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna anchor this corner of the pond, as well as give Sean and I a termination point for this formal brick wall in here, which is going to maintain that deep section. Once we get this sucker set, which apparently that guy couldn't handle, so we brought in the big guns. Once we get this sucker set, we're gonna continue to roll along this wall, and you can see Ed has already put in four boulders in through here, really showing the nice shape of some of the shelves to be carved as well as just creating a lot more contour and stuff along this bottom depth. So you ready, Eddie? Yep. Nice. So let's watch Ed as he gets this rock in place. So this monster boulder I think really works well. The reason we're doing this trying to break up some of the lines. We got a lot of these flat slabs on the bottom. We have this really nice architectural wall down there as well. Now we want to break it up. We're going to go vertical with it, try to break up some of those lines just to add a little bit of interest, but it's also holding that entire back wall up. So that one big boulder is going to set that edge. Yeah, this is the whole idea with this pond is it's a recreational pond. So that means it's going to be not only for the lizards, but it's going to be for the customers as well. So uh, John and his wife are going to be in the water. We're trying to create an environment exactly the way nature intended it living water. So we want to create really cool environment. We're going to have these big boulders down here. They're actually almost like seat rocks. And then you have this big massive stone in the back, which is just like a cliff face that's dropping off. And then we're going to transition up into that waterfall. So all of this, this big rock is anchoring that entire composition. It's going to help us tie into the rest of that wall as well as the water. How'd we do? That's great. It's pretty awesome, man. I mean, I know we only set, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about nine boulders. But with that nine boulders, we have a majority of this bottom section done, especially with that brick wall being finished. So we're gonna kind of call it quits for the day. Let me come on over here. But we managed to set some of these stepping stones. Really, it just kind of happened organically. We wanted to create some kind of entrance down into this pond, being that it was a big part of their wish list or a big item on their customer's wish list was to be able to get in and out of this pond and enjoy it, which is why we've done the deep section and some of this formal area down here, kind of like a little seat wall, but we needed to have some kind of access to get in and out. So this was where we creatively started that staircase using these big pieces of moss rock. And we, rather than coming right out of the door out of their screened in porch area down into the pond, we wanted to force them around this way to kind of come down and it'll help really kind of tie in this intake bay to make it look like more of an extension of the pond. We're still going to have all this be rock and some of that brick in through here to hold back that edge for this patio that's going to come six feet out of the house and then run this way over to that gathering space there. So good progress today. It was a little slow going because of the late start because of the groundwater issue, but we got that resolved. That's all done. We can put that to bed. Now we can just focus on rocking, rocking and rolling 
on this pond. So tomorrow you will see an even more incredible amount of progress all in through here. So I think we'll finish all of this tomorrow and get this intake bay. We do have another CAC coming in to give us a hand and we're gonna call it quits there, Eddie. Are. It's gonna be dark. Not that it hasn't stopped us before. It's true. I don't know if these <laughs> lights right here would really do us all that much good. All right, then. <laughs>